The third and last act of the Hades chapter, the final battle is taking place in Elysion between Athena and her bronze saints against Hades and his two minions, Thanatos and Hypnos. And that's pretty much the summary of what this story is about. It's the conclusion of Saint Seiya overall, so it pretty much focuses on this. Um, even though it's six episodes, the pacing is still very even and all the characters are presented and united. And during the final battle, there are some cool things that do happen that you do have to see for yourself, like what also happens in the previous OAVs. And the ending is also pretty amazing, and it's very rare that Shonen uses this kind of ending, but it's kind of ambiguous, but yet respectfully satisfying. But I feel if you have some familiarity with some of the prior works of Kurumada Masami, specifically like, let's say, Ringu Nikai, of course, I thought the ending was very fitting to how he does things sometimes. The anime demonstrates excellent themes on what it means to be a god and what it truly means to be human, thus emphasizing on the value of life. Granted, this can be done in just about anything, but I like how it includes the use of gods of all beings in conveying this, and that even gods are capable of making errors and fall falling to the same mistakes of human nature. And overall, most of the Hades OEVs have a theme of what defines human nature in relation to sin and judging people based on them, whether man or god. What I also like is how Athena is used in the end. This isn't really a spoiler considering that most of the time the saints are trying to give her a cloth and trying to um, foreshadow it, this. And of course she needs um, this cloth for combative purposes, and it's nice to see that she has this role for once and has a different kind of use in comparison to how she was mostly used throughout the duration of the franchise. I feel her brief moment you know, in the end, really outshines all of that. And I think throughout most of the series, her usage was mostly faithful to the original mythology of Athena. Thanatos and Hypnos, though their presences are brief, they are they do have quite an impact as well as how they have to offer as villains. Even though Thanatos is the weaker and more brash of the twin minions, he does some things that none other um, none other Saint say a billion has done, and. And you have to see to find out. So for this series, I give the story and characters a 9.25 out of 10. While the quality of the animation still retains from the last OAV, the explosiveness of the action is still fresh with the two new villains and their moves are really, really cool. The designs of the villains are very intimidating with their pale skin tone, dark clothes, and non-pupil eyes. The designs of the cloths are very well detailed, very glossy, and still appropriately complements the body frames of the characters and the execution of the action. The design of Hades' armor is excellently detailed with the joints and complements his figure and gives room for his wild hair and looks appropriately mobile overall. Um, try to combine the rough features of Gut's Berserk armor and Griffin's, um, Griffith's d um, dignified and shiningness with his current armor in the Berserk manga series, but of course um, make it black and with some big ass wings and that's the best way I can describe Hades' getup and how cool it is. And Athena's armor is also excellently animated and brightly colored, and the design actually reflects the gimmick of the goddess she is, um, the goddess she is inspired by. Another quality that I kept on pointing out is the lighting. In this series, it takes place in a more heavenly, utopia-like environment, so the place is filled with flowers and clear skies. The flowers stick out and the lighting, in contrast to this, just really sticks out to me, considering that the villains in the Lord are the Lord of Darkness, so I found a very nice ironic twist to that along with what was mostly presented in the previous OAVs. And of course, the Elysion, which is really called Elysium, um, really complements what was originally portrayed in the original Greek mythology. So for this nice twist, along with unpredictable um, you know, with some unpredictable twists that I appreciated in the past, which you have to see to find out, I award a 9.25 out of 10 for Arn Animation. The new voice cast from the previous OAV is back, and I feel even though the series is shorter, I felt the newer voice actors for Shun, Hyoga, and Athena were present enough to have me form an opinion on them. Hyoga's new voice actor is Mura, um, Hiroaki. He actually does a good job of capturing the original performance of Hashimoto Koichi, though I think his voice is kind of deeper. I think the character lacked any significant dialogue or soliloquies that really define the character to really make you evaluate him 100%, but I think he does a good job with what he has to offer.
The only voice change that I could ever find justified is, of course, that of Shiryu, since um, Suzuki Hirotaka has passed on. His newer voice actor is Sakurai Takahiro, the voice of Clara from Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, and Suzaku Kururugi from Code Geass. Suzuki just really has this distinct voice that always brought a unique charisma and authority to, you know, not just his character, but every character he's ever played throughout his career in anime. Sakurai really tries hard to emulate that performance, but of course it will never compare to how Suzuki did it. I think the new voice actors are good in their own ways, but they will never compare to the original performances of the um, original actors, whether the actors were 16 or 60. As for the music, the background music is still the same from the OABs and TV series, so nothing left to comment on that. Other than that, it's still a nice touch and still trying to maintain the overall spirit and identity of the franchise. Megami no Senshi is still the opening theme, and I really... I already talked about how awesome those qualities of those songs are in my review of in the Inferno chapter. But the ending theme, Kami no En, is very impressive. It is one of those few songs that captures the Greek mythology inspiration, as well as the utopia environment and atmosphere it takes place in, and also does what the Saint Seiya soundtrack does best, talking about the themes of love, hope, and unity. If Saint Seiya still managed to keep the original voice actors, I would have given the music and voice acting a 10 out of 10, since they were perfect. But the new voice actors, they do cut it for me, and I think they are good, but not perfect. Which is why I still give the music and voice acting a 9 out of 10. Well, all I can say is you're going to watch one hell of an ending, though it is kind of open-ended. But not many authors today are too ballsy, in my opinion, and the way it ends is just awesome. Granted, there are some loose ends, but it ends to a point where you know the characters have all developed. I know there is a new installment of Saint Seiya called Next Dimension, which is officially Kuramata's work, and of course, I know that there is um, Lost Canvas. I can't comment much about it yet, but I would love to see where Saint Seiya can go from how it ends. I heard Kuramata wanted to make one more story arc, but dis um, disputes with publishers and declining sales had to make him end at this point, which is why I think it, you know, feels a little open-ended. But despite that, it's well concluded since they fought one of the baddest gods of all time. And for that, I give Saint Say the Hades Chapter Elysion an overall score of a 9.2 out of 10.